I was so blown away when I did this one simple little acoustic treatment hack for my studio that I felt obligated to share it with you guys. This is something I see forgotten about over and over again, and myself included, but when you take the time to actually address the problem, you will not believe how big of a difference it can make. So in this video today, I'm gonna to show you three different ways to fix any acoustic problems that we might have with our actual studio desk. And this is gonna dramatically improve the acoustics of your home studio. What's going on everyone? My name is Bobby Balo. I'm the mixing and mastering engineer at Raytown Productions, and I help home studio owners and bedroom producers make better sounding music without needing to buy more expensive gear or plugins. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for being here. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because I drop new videos every single week on tips and tricks for mixing and mastering music, and you do not want to miss those. And as a special thank you for you spending your time with me today, I have a gift for you. In the description, you can find a link to download a copy of my home studio gear guide. Now this guide has all my personal recommendations that are based on actual scientific measurements of the equipment, so you won't waste money buying underperforming gear that is built up on a bunch of marketing hype. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to go to the description and grab your free copy. So I'm a huge believer in giving credit where credit is due, and this video today was inspired from a conversation I had with a good friend of mine, James Zan. He has a YouTube channel as well. He does amazing gear reviews and plug-in reviews for rock and metal. Definitely check out his channel, he is great. But he is the one that recommended that I try what I'm gonna show you today. So here's the problem with a typical home studio. You have this giant desk that is sitting in front of you and it acts as a primary reflection point from your studio speakers. So typically when we treat a home studio, they tell you to always treat the primary reflection points. So everybody treats their walls, behind the speakers, their back wall, and maybe the ceiling. But no one really talks about the desk. And this desk is gonna cause huge problems from reflecting off the surface and going right in your ears. And I really didn't think this was that big of a problem until I cleared off my desk and put a giant absorber on my desk. And then I played music and I couldn't believe how much more clear the sonic image is when you have absorption on your desk. But in a normal functioning studio, it's kind of impractical to have a giant sound panel on our desk, right? We need to use our desk. So there's basically just three different things that we can do to try to fix this problem. The first way is to just get rid of the desk altogether. I know some producers and mixing engineers that literally work on a laptop and don't have a desk at all, but for most people, it's impractical, so that's not gonna be a possible solution. Option two is to literally tilt our desk up so that the primary reflection point is far enough away that it won't reflect in our ears and we can capture that sound with the other acoustic treatment in our room. Now, I tried to do this, but what I found out was that I had to tilt my desk a lot higher than I was hoping, and it almost felt dangerous because my computer monitors were starting to tip over, and I felt like they were gonna collapse on me at any moment. So that leaves us with the third solution, which is you literally just have to put an absorber on your desk. Now, like I mentioned before, a full sound panel to cover the entire desk didn't really work for me, but instead what I've done is make smaller sound panels that are literally just designed to sit at the primary reflection points on my desk. So where do you place them? Where is the primary reflection point? All you need to do is take a mirror, set it on your desk, and move it around until you see either of your speakers in the mirror. That's where you'd put one of these little mini sound panels. So these little mini sound panels are basically 14 inches by 14 inches, and they're made by taking two inch thick mineral wool and wrapping canvas around that, and then I have quarter inch plywood just on the back just for something to staple into. So let me show you. You can literally see you just staple the canvas right to the uh, plywood back here. And I just set the rock wall on top and we're done. And as long as you take a little bit of time to make sure you don't have any wrinkles and you fold your corners correctly, they actually look really nice. So with the two panels on my primary reflection points on my desk, it immediately opened up a lot more clarity with the sonic image of any music I listened to. I was actually very surprised how much bigger and easier it was to identify where the different musical elements were inside of the mix just by having these little panels there. And I didn't know what I was missing out on until I actually put them there and realized that uh, this is something that always needs to happen. 
And me being a scientist, I was a little skeptical that maybe I'm just biased, so I actually did in-room measurements, and I'm gonna show you those right now. So I'm showing you two traces. You have a green and a purple line. The purple line is what the original response is of my room without any of these acoustic pads. The green line is with the acoustic pads in place. So this is absorbing that primary reflection point on my desk. Now what you'll notice is that there's really not a whole lot of absorption going on below about 300 hertz, and that's expected. The magic happens after 300 hertz. And I was really shocked because in certain regions, like around 500 hertz and around 1.5K, I saw almost a difference of five decibels. Five dB is pretty dramatic. Can you imagine taking an EQ and boosting it five dB in 1.5K? Like that difference is enormous. And you can see that consistently above 3K, the oscillations just from the room response are flattened out pretty dramatically just from having these panels in place. And these things took me 15 minutes to build. Like, it was not difficult at all. This isn't some magic marketing BS. This is a real thing. And it's so simple to make these little tiny acoustic panels that you can put on your desk. And it fixes so many problems that I've had in my studio. So if you've never thought to do this, I highly encourage you to take some time and just cover your desk with some sort of sound absorbing material and see if it makes a difference in your studio. If it does, try to find a way of keeping some sort of sound absorption on your desk at all times when you're listening to music or when you're making it because it's really gonna help you clear up your sonic image and make better mixing and mastering decisions. And if you can't hear a difference at all by covering your desk with an acoustic panel, either your desk is not a problem at all or you have a lot bigger problems in your studio and you should probably focus your attention there first. And just thinking about how much of a difference the desk absorption played in my sound really got me thinking about what the computer monitors are doing to the sound as well. But I'll save that for another video. So I have a question for you. Have you ever tried to acoustically treat your desk or do something to it to minimize any of those reflections off of it? Let me know in the comments below because I'm super curious to know what other people are doing to try to treat this problem. So with that, don't forget to grab a copy of my home studio gear guide. That's gonna be super valuable if you're looking to buy or upgrade any sort of studio gear. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because I bring new videos to you every single week. They're all super valuable and I know you're gonna get a lot out of them. If you'd like to help support me, the best thing you can do is just share this video or another one of my videos with your friends or to an online community like Facebook or Reddit. I know there's a lot of other people that are trying to get their songs to sound as good as possible and I'm sure they're gonna find it extremely helpful. With that, thank you so much for your time and attention today, and I hope to see you in another video.